bring us in the loop about the most uh, recent developments. So um, I, what I would suggest is that I'm going to uh, please mute yourself um, if you're not uh, while Marina is speaking, because if more than one person has, his, has their microphone open, there's an annoying, annoying reverb. Um, so what I would suggest is we first let Marina speak, and then afterwards um, we do hold a we have a little Q and A session. So uh, feel free to already during her talk uh, paste any questions into either the chat or into the um, into the Mentimeter uh, the Menti.com link that I've pasted in the chat. So you just go to Menti.com and you enter the code, and then you can ask uh, whatever questions you want. And once Marina's finished, we will uh, go over them one by one. And um, we will record this webinar, so we will distribute recordings uh, afterwards as well. So enjoy, and Marina, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Gwen, and thank you very much for the um, introduction. Um, I would also like to welcome all participants to this webinar. I see that there is um, a mix of uh, familiar faces, and by that I mean uh, um, NOADs and um, newcomers. Um, as Gwen said, um, this uh, webinar is about policies, um, uh, focusing on, uh, on new developments and some tips about um, effective uh, policy making. Um, to be more precise, I will um, present um, some of the latest policy developments and uh, try to provide some guidance on uh, effective policy making. Um, then I will move on to um, um, discuss the ways in which um, Open Air Advance in particular can support uh, not just uh, the NOADs, the National Open Access Desks, uh, the, the network that we have um, throughout Europe, but also um, all other stakeholders interested in, uh, in developing, adopting or aligning their open science and open access policies. And uh, during the, the last part of this webinar, um, we will take any questions that you may have, but also we would like your feedback in terms of uh, um, resources and materials that uh, you think that Open Air uh, Advance could develop within this particular task that could be um, of support to you um, as uh, people who are um, actively involved in, uh, in advancing open science and uh, in the adoption of, uh, um, of open access policies. Um, so um, the question is um, why me uh, doing this uh, um, this webinar and uh, why um, open air? Um, I think that uh, Gwen in her um, introduction uh, mentioned that within open air uh, advance there is a, a specific task that focuses on on policies. In fact, uh, within open air um, advance we have. Um, we have created a number of task forces that aim to look at uh, uh, specific issues. So in addition to the, the policy task force, there is also one focusing on, on legal aspects and another one focusing on, on data management. Um, the idea is also to find uh, uh, an alignment between these uh, different uh, task forces to support you further um, in this work. And um, um, the, um, the overall aim of uh, not just the policy task force, but um, of the rest of the task forces um, is to enhance uh, capacity building and competencies in relation to um, open science topics, to raise awareness both within NOADS but also um, at the national level. Um, obviously, a very important part of the, the work we do is about uh, knowledge exchange and uh, the exchange of good practices and experiences. Um, we firmly believe that uh, we can learn from each other um, about things that have gone well, things that didn't go that that well. Um, Europe is a, is a big continent with many countries, so uh, we have a good mix of uh, countries that have um, that are advanced in terms of um, of open science and open access policies. Um, other countries that are in the process of developing policies. So we feel that there is. 
um, a good mix and uh, there is obviously no need to invent the wheel each time that um, either a country or a specific um, university or a national funder is uh, is in the process of um, developing um, a policy. So in that sense we would also um, like to develop um, a mentoring scheme to facilitate further your work having uh, maybe NOAA's acting as, as mentors to um, less experienced one or um, new new nodes that can um, um, work uh, together and uh, support the work that they do at national uh, level. Um, mobilizing ties with all stakeholders is also um, a key issue of the a key element of the of the work with uh, we do, and especially uh, mobilizing ties, creating synergies and um, um, collaboration uh, with the stakeholders um, at national uh, level and this is a, um, a key element of the, the work that the, the NOAA network is, is doing as the aspiration within Open Air Advance is for NOAA to become a true national uh, hub in terms of uh, open science and open access policies. Um, so the overall aim of this, um, um, this Open Air Advance um, task force is um, ultimately the reinforcement and alignment of open science open access policies within the EU um, we've seen through our experience uh, from from previous projects such as uh, Pasteur for a way that um, alignment is also a very important uh, a very important issue and it becomes uh, all the more important if we take into consideration the fact that uh, um, uh, research is um, is is in terms national we have uh, research teams collaborating uh, and uh, from 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 various countries so the more aligned this this policies uh, are um, the better it is for the um, uh, for the researchers uh, who have to comply with them and the uh, second goal relates to the benchmarking of um, open access and open science policies with other policies um, around the around the world um, so moving on, we, we felt that um, a good starting point would be to, to define what we mean by, by policy. Um, by policies, um, we mean laws that are passed by parliament or national funder policies uh, or uh, research plans or roadmaps or any other agreements between uh, uh, multiple uh, parties. Um, this, um, um, these documents, whether we're talking about a, a law or a roadmap or, or an agreement, um, includes uh, information um, about the, the scope of the, of the policy and also describes the, the roles and the responsibilities of um, each party involved in this um, in the process of developing and obviously implementing a, a policy and um, it can also include uh, um, issues related to, to compliance, uh, possible sanctions in the case of uh, no compliance, um, issues related to, to the monitoring uh, of, the, uh, of the policy implementation and obviously um, uh, other, other aspects. Um, the, the, the exact structure and content of the policy is obviously shaped by a, a number and a variety of, um, uh, of factors, uh, which can include, for example, the, the existence of a national um, infrastructure. We see that in, we've seen that, uh, for example, in a, in a number of cases, um, the, um, the existence and the development of the appropriate infrastructure has more or less uh, um, been the the first step followed by the um uh, by the adoption uh, uh, later on of the of a policy in other cases it has worked the other way around um, nonetheless infrastructure is an element that can influence the whole process obviously cultural aspects in the sense how um, um, how familiar or how um, how open um, uh, researchers and different communities are to um, um, to open science and open access how familiar they are with uh, related uh, processes. Um, these are just uh, a few examples of, of factors that um, 
uh, can can influence the um, the process. Obviously, there are other ones, such as, for example, the the existence of a um, of a working group or any other um, informal, um, um, let's say, group um, that could can take the lead in in pushing uh, uh, forward for the uh, um, adoption of a of a policy. Um, up until now, um, in the case of um, um, open access and open science policies, on the one one hand, we have uh, um, what can be described as a European policy, which is um, the Horizon uh, 2020 policy in relation to, uh, to open access to publications and, and research data. Uh, we also have um, um, national policies. For example, Cyprus has a, has a national policy. Obviously, many other countries in the, in the EU also have adopted national policies. Um, we can also have uh, institutional policies, and by that we mean uh, policies adopted by universities or research centers. Um, the University of Nino policy um, is an example. Or um, such policies can be adopted by uh, uh, research funding uh, organizations. Um, UKRI is uh, is, an, uh, is an example. Um, so the policies, as I said, can can have multiple uh, forms. Um, Turning to the um, um, to the more recent developments, I think that the um, announcement of uh, Plan S uh, is um, is a development that um, has given us further motivation and incentive to to discuss further um, about open access policies, and uh, um, I think it was um, also. Um, uh, a big motivation in terms of uh, of our decision uh, to to run this uh, um, this webinar. Um, according to the announcement, by 2020, scientific publications that result from research funding uh, by public grants provided by participating national and European research councils and funding bodies must be published in compliant open access journals or compliant open access platforms. Um, the um, the plan S. Uh, um, actually shows the, the commitment of uh, a number of uh, uh, research funding organizations, both at European and by that I mean mainly the, the ERC and national uh, funding bodies to um, implement this goal by January 2020 um, and to do so by taking um, a number of measures to, to to uh, um, reach uh, this um, this target, um, in a sense, it's um, um, it's a, a commitment that sort of um, that reaffirms uh, um, the the previous decision and commitment taken by um, the EU and the member states, and expressed in the um, 2016 Council uh, conclusions that um, I'm sure um, all of you um, know. And this plan S is um, is our articulated um, around a number of um, of ten uh, principles. Um, among them, um, um, it is stated that funders will uh, monitor compliance and sanction uh, um, uh, non-compliance. Um, they state that the hybrid model is not compliant with the, um, the principles um, described within the, the Plan S. Um, that authors uh, should um, retain copyright uh, of publication with um, no restrictions, and also that funders uh, should establish criteria um, uh, to be provided by um, by, by the journals. Um, in the meantime, since um, um, this uh, announcement in, in early September, um, a, num a number of other um, research funding uh, funding organizations have also uh, joined. So uh, this is clearly um, an important development uh, that is that is expected uh, to impact on uh, the funders' roles and also uh, publishing uh, models. So this has um, clearly. Um, triggered uh, very interesting discussions and, and, and further developments are um, definitely um, expected. Um, the other um, important development, um, we had the chance to um, talk about it um, also during a, a webinar that we did in, in early July for um, uh, for the open air nodes is the 
uh, um, revised uh, the 2018 uh, uh, revised recommendation. It's a revision of the 2012 uh, recommendation, and the um, and the the Commission report that shows um, um, the, the the recent developments in EU member states, um, where um, it. It can uh, the, the report shows a clear positive uh, impact on the policy development at the uh, uh, national level result resulting from the um, 2012 um, recommendation. Um, we see that the majority of countries have a positive stance and, and believe that it would be valuable to move from soft policies to, to harder options, even though they feel that this uh, should be done more through collaboration than, than legislation. And um, in terms of uh, barriers, um, uh, countries highlighted the lack of alignment uh, as an important uh, barrier in the fragmentation of national policies. Um, issues related um, um, around uh, monitoring, insufficient monitoring, um, and in insufficient funded um, and complicated arrangements for gold open access and the fact that sometimes there are no clear responsibilities regarding implementation and uh, monitoring. Um, in terms of the um, collaboration and um, alignment aspect, um, I should uh, point out that um, these are areas where Open Air Advance and uh, the task force in, in particular um, will focus on uh, by um, enhancing collaboration um, within uh, in, uh, in in member states between the, the different stakeholders uh, involved, and also uh, between uh, member states to to facilitate uh, um, also um, alignment and. Um, I will come back also to that later. In terms of the responsibilities, in terms of implementation and monitoring, we feel that also we can have a, a positive uh, impact in that um, aspect through um, our, our policy templates that um, um, that are in the process of, of being revised, and we feel that there um, um, the, the rights, roles, and responsibilities of um, each party are more um, clearly um, articulated. Um, after all, as I showed in the very beginning, um, a policy document, um, um, an, an efficient policy document, should uh, um, should um, highlight in a in a clear way the the roles and the responsibilities of um, of each party um, involved. Um, again, as for the the key messages of the of the report on the progress of the of the member states following the 2012 um, um, recommendation, uh, we see that um, in terms of publication, more than half of the countries have are in the process of uh, implementing uh, open access policies. Um, universities are, are more advanced uh, um, compared to um, um, to research uh, centers, and universities also have um, a strong role in supporting uh, open access by organizing um, awareness raising activities, um, um, other events such as conferences or, or workshops, and a number of them having set. Uh, um, um, uh, websites uh, that are dedicated specifically um, to open access. Um, in terms of um, um, research data, um, the report showed uh, that uh, further coordination is uh, is necessary for aligning policies and, and practices. And at the same time, it, it seems that even where um, uh, policies for research data um, have not yet been adopted, uh, data management plans are nonetheless um, 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 an important element uh, of um, um, of national strategies and, and, and policies, and um, and also that fair principles um, are are also um, considered. Um, moving to rewards and skills, uh, most work seems to um, have been done at um, institutional uh, level, uh, which means that uh, further work appears to be uh, uh, necessary at the uh, at the national uh, level. 
and um, also um, half of the countries have already um, um, infrastructure and uh, uh, to support um, the transition to uh, to open access. And what is I think more important is the fact that um, these infrastructures also meet quality standards such as uh, open air compliance or the, the fair uh, principles, um, which is um, also a very um, significant um, element to have into consideration. Um, in terms of finally collaboration and transparency, yeah. um, half of the countries yeah. monitor the, the development and growth of open access to publication. Yeah. Um, this does not seem to be the yeah. case for, for research yeah. data. Yeah. Um, uh, negotiations for big deals is also an important element and again we've seen uh, over the um, um <laughs> <laughs> the past year or so important developments developments yeah. um, taking place at national level we, we've seen the um, the, um, the decisions that have taken place with uh, with big publishers uh, and uh, um, the um, the initiatives uh, taken from from stakeholders uh, and consortia at uh, at national level and uh, also the report highlighted this need to develop uh, further um, alternative uh, metrics um, and also in a more um, harmonized way um, across the um, um, across the EU. Um, as we've done, especially for for NOAA, as we we've recently done this, um, we've done another webinar focusing on policies. We thought that it would be more interesting to to focus on just a few uh, developments and not just uh, state uh, everything. Um, feeling that uh, by now most of you are um, well well aware of uh, policy developments um, taking place at uh, at the EU level. Um, so the next thing is um, is about the the, the design of um, of these uh, open science policies and uh, um, what the um, what open air uh, can do to to support you um, in in your work. Um, as I mentioned before, um, um, a key part of our work focused on over the. the past months within the the task force um, to revise the uh, to revise policy uh, templates that have been that had been developed by um, by other projects such as uh, for example Pasteur for away um, we did that because we felt that um, um, there were important developments that had taken place uh, since these uh, um, um, these templates had been uh, developed. Developed, for example, the, the Pasteur and the, the Madonna yeah, yeah. templates, which uh, focused mainly mm -hmm. on uh, open access to publications. So uh, we wanted to ensure okay. that. Um, um, the the yeah. templates we we produce also yeah. take into consideration both the um, both of the uh, open access to, to to research data, but also uh, make reference to um, to open science um, aspects such as, for example, yeah. um, citizen science or um, open peer review. Um, so our our work focus on producing yeah. uh, new templates both for research funding and research performing um, organizations. Organizations. Uh, we created fact sheets for um, uh, both RPOs and um, FPOs uh, in an attempt to to show uh, what our work in in, in open air um, advance uh, is in in relation to um, to open uh, open science and open access policies and and how they could uh, uh, benefit from 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 this work that we are doing and also um, how especially the the NOAD work network can help uh, all the interested uh, stakeholders um, and we also um, we also um, developed uh, checklists again for RPOs and um, RFOs um, these can help both um, newcomers in the sense that it's um, um, th through the through the questions um, that um, that we um, that are um, that are included in in each uh, checklist um a, a funder or a, or an institution um if they have not uh, if they have not yet developed a policy they can have um 
um, an idea of the of the different uh, um, elements that this uh, policy policy should include. Uh, for those who uh, might already have a policy, I think it's a good way to 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 check. Uh, um whether um all the elements are are, are are there and whether there's something more that um could be done um for the the templates and the the checklists uh, i should also point out the fact that um it was not just about um um, updating and, and revising existing uh, um, existing materials that were already available. It was also a, a request from uh, from our uh, NOAA network, and especially uh, from NOAAs and from coming from countries that um, are in the process of um, of developing uh, policies and thought that um, such could be uh, very useful to them. Um, in terms of the um, uh, of the the national policy, it's something that we're still working on. We thought that maybe um, it would be more useful to um, create something of a of a set of uh, principles. Um, the templates, the fact sheets, and the the checklists are already um, uh, ready, and I think that very soon they will be available through the the revamped uh, open air uh, portal. Um, um, it's a bit of a, of a shame in terms of the the timing, as we we felt that um, we would be able to to. Show Show you this uh, um, um, uh, these uh, these new materials on the on the new uh, portal during this um, this webinar, uh, but um, um, we hope that um, you will you will be able to access them in the um, in a in a, in a short uh, while. So um, apologies um, for this. Um, and finally, in terms of um, um, of any of, of tips about um, um, developing and, and promoting uh, in an effective way the the, the policy making process, um, as we've said before, um, it's it's clearly it's very important for uh, for you whether you are um, a NOAD or any other um, stakeholder within a, a country interested in in uh, open access uh, policy making. Um, um, to identify the, the key stakeholders in your country, uh, whether this is a, a ministry to um, get in touch with your national point of uh, reference, uh, um, funding organizations, uh, um, um, also universities, and um, identify who who the who who these uh, stakeholders with uh, a key uh, role in the process are and uh, get in touch with them and explore the possibility of maybe setting up a, a, a working group if there is uh, uh, not one um, uh, exi already existing um, as we mentioned before collaboration is a key element in the policy uh, making uh, process um, so um, uh, the more uh, stakeholders you have on board um, um, I think uh, this um, can make uh, the case for uh, the adoption of an open access policy uh, much uh, much stronger and obviously talking also with um, um, with your research community and the the, the different um, um, different research communities are as um, each um, each discipline has different uh, uh, different needs and has uh, different sees different Different benefits and also has uh, um, different uh, questions arising. Um, a further thing is to identify the key issues to work on. Um, is that the adoption of a, of, a, of policies? If um, you, just, you 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 do not have one um, until now, or is it more about aligning uh, um, existing uh, policies, or maybe just moving from having uh, principles on data management to the actual um, adoption of a of a policy, or um, 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 like discussing uh, um, um, elements related um, to open science, such as uh, citizen science, for example. Um, as I said, the open air related materials, especially for those who are um, in the process of developing and adopting policies, will be soon available from uh, the open air portal. And we feel that this could be uh, uh, provide a strong support to the, the work that. Um, 
uh, that you are doing. Um, if you're not a NOAD, please know that um, uh, open-air NOADs are, are here for, for you to, to, to help you in this, uh, um, in, in your, your work. And also, they can act uh, as, uh, they can transfer to, to us as a, um, as a task force uh, any, any issues that um, you would like us to, to, to work on. Um, and um, uh, like whether this is um, materials that you would like to see us develop or whether you feel that um, we could organize uh, um, an event or, or um, 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 a training uh, session. Um, so um, that's it from, from my side. Thank you very much. And um, I really look forward to, to hearing you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Marina, for this uh, for this very interesting presentation. Um, like I said before we started, um, we have recorded this presentation, and together with the slides, we will make this available to you um, uh, later. So uh, if you missed anything or you want to revisit something, don't worry about it. Um, we have one question coming in via the the mentee for now, which is the um, which is the one that is displayed right now. So. Um, whether open air has any kind of impact on development of policies in, in, in Europe. Uh, and Marina, I think you already discussed this um, discussed this in your presentation, but I'm not sure if you want to, to add something. Um, we've been supporting um, um, uh, NOADs in a, in a variety of, of ways. Um, so we, I, I feel that we do have uh, um, an impact. Um, obviously, um, the, um, the 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 adoption of a policy is the result of a variety of factors, uh, um, but um, in the sense that um, okay, we provide the the support through through training, through um, mentoring, uh, advising nodes and other interested uh, stakeholders. Um, we have also actively participated in uh, in events organized by uh, by nodes in, in in their countries, um, and. Um, this is, let's say, a relatively new activity within uh, open air. So uh, um, I'm sure that uh, we'll see further impact in the in the coming months and the the coming years. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Feel free to just uh, type them in the chat or even even unmute yourself uh, temporarily. I think we're not too many people, so I think it's possible. <laughs> No questions. That means that, that either you're very clear, you were very clear, Marina, which I thought so as well, or, or people. Or, uh, uh, or maybe they weren't interested at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I maybe ask a question? I mean, um, these are the the the, um, the, the first. Uh, it's actually the, the the second webinar that we've done focusing on on policies. As I said, the first one was a sort of an in-house one in the sense that um, it was for uh, just for the the NOAD network. But we would really be interested in organizing uh, um, um, a webinar focusing on uh, um, on a, a specific more. more um, or specific topics. So, um, is something that um, would be of interest to you? And if yes, which um, topics would that be? And in the meantime, I see further questions. Good. Um, for the templates, um, I think that they will be soon available. Um, I, 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 I cannot tell the, the exact date. It's more of an organizational um, uh, thing. Than, um, so um, I think that once they are available through the, the portal, we'll announce it through also the, the social media. Um, and in terms of the um, uh, national policies, um, we have the, the country profiles that have also been um, uh, revised. 
um, and there you will be able to, uh, um, for each country, um, to have information not just about the, the infrastructures, but also um, about the, um, the policies that, um, that exist um, in, uh, in each country. Yeah, about, uh, Maria, about the channels where they will be announced. Um, usually we're quite active on, on Twitter and, and uh, on social media, like on Twitter and the Facebook group. So definitely keep an eye on that one. And mm -hmm. in principle, this should be um, announced as a news item, I think, on the on the open air portal. So uh, mm -hmm. just keep an eye on this and, and, and you can make sure that we will make a bit, we will make a lot of noise when, when they're there. So, um, and I've just pasted the link in the chat to the um, to the open air country pages, so where you can see for your own country. And then somebody asks, would it be possible to have a webinar on European labor policies? Which is actually, which is some a question that I I do not really understand. Me either. Because but. we're talking about open science policies, so we are not talking about <laughs> policies in general. So if you mean something specific, please, uh, please let me let me know in the chat. <laughs> I don't, I don't get okay, so and then there's another question from Heather Lola from um, from uh, Warwick. So has there been a specific decision to use open science rather than open research in relation to policies? Uh, do you have good engagement from arts and social sciences? Um, I think that we opted for for open science as um, like also the 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 EU is uh, in in related documents talking about the transition from from open access to um, to open science. Um, and engagement uh, from arts and social science in 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 relation to um, to taking up um, open access policies. Oh. Uh, I think that well, uh, obviously there is a, a difference between disciplines with. Uh, um, 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 STEM being more um, uh, more um, more receptive, let's say, and more familiar with uh, with open access than, for example, the social sciences and humanities. But then again, I think that there is um, there are differences also that go beyond disciplines and have to do with um, um, uh, differences between countries where you have. Um, um, researchers in a particular country being more open uh, because they 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 already yeah. they're already um, uh, policies at national or institutional level and other um, and and researchers coming from uh, from other countries such as um, for example some some countries in in in, in South Europe that are um, uh, let's say less advanced. Uh, there, you see that the EU framework is uh, um, um, is um, is something uh, relatively um, new to them. Yeah, Marina, if I can chip in because I noticed there's yeah. another comment in the in the chat that says that ah. there's a, a word that it's easier in languages that has a word that cognate with Wissenschaft, which is a German word for. Um, for science. So uh, what I just want to, um, from, from a general perspective, because we do a lot of training, um, that is that we do realize that in some countries, uh, the term science has a very specific connotation with STEM, but um, mm -hmm. we interpret science um, as really, um, yeah, wish in terms or, or, or science in general or research in general. So um, also including humanities and social sciences. Um, we do realize that sometimes it's, that this can be confusing. So I have to say that that um, when we talk about this, we usually stress that we 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 want it to be you know like encompassing all forms of research or scholarship. Um, but I we do think that in general, when it comes to policy making, the term open science policies is is like the, the commonly accepted term right now to encompass both uh, like open access policies and open data policies and. Um, other uh, 
other open policies that might be um, that might be developed. So there's no value judgment there, but we do realize that we have to um, that we have to point that out regularly. That, that it's yes, that can there. indeed that can indeed be a problem if like um, uh, concepts are um, interpreted in, in in different ways in 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 different countries. So. Uh... Okay, are there any other questions? You can also just unmute yourself if you want to talk, but we're not we're not many people anymore, so um. No? Well, in that case, I will I will close down this webinar. Um, we will distribute the recording. Um, uh, at a later stage, maybe not this week, but you will receive at one point the you will receive at one point the link, uh, and that leaves me um, with uh, nothing else than to thank you, Marina, for um, for uh, talking to us about this. I know you've very, you've been very busy this week, so I'm very happy, very <laughs> glad you made the time for this. Uh, and yeah, thank you. All you attending, I hope this was of interest to you and. Um, um, uh, we will we will be sending you the, the documentation uh, related to this uh, to this webinar later. So uh, thank you very much, and talk to you later. Thank you.